Developing a hypothesis is a very broad area. You can develop hypotheses based on backtesting, data mining, domain knowledge, uh, ideas gathered from external sources, from colleagues, etc. There are several different ways to develop a hypothesis, or you could obviously develop a hypothesis based on observation of markets. For today's tutorial, what we're going to do is assume uh, knowledge of a momentum factor and go ahead and try and implement this momentum factor. And along the way, I'll describe how we're going about doing so. The momentum factor will essentially consider returns from previous periods as possibly predictive of future returns on the same Darwin portfolio. We'll also be crafting Darwin, constructing Darwin portfolios of different sizes uh, and going about constructing logic for how to go ahead and do that. What this tutorial will not be covering is performance fees. These are very, very important to consider in calculating your final returns. Uh, we do not have the time for this video to cover them in detail as it is a fairly lengthy implementation and needs to be discussed in isolation. So we'll cover that in a future tutorial dedicated to performance fees and transaction costs. Uh, this tutorial also does not consider a volatility of returns and doesn't cater to data using the volatility of the returns time series that's being used. It also doesn't cover divergence as a cost at this point in time. It has a fixed transaction cost that we'll be implementing shortly. No customization of portfolio weights, therefore no portfolio optimization is uh, conducted in this tutorial. And also, uh, as you're aware, Darwin validation dates are extremely important to consider when um, constructing portfolios, the validation date being the date that the Darwin actually started trading at Darwin X. Any past data came from the Darwin provider's previous brokerage. Now, that is not to say that the previous brokerage is not reliable. It's just to say that data after validation is most certainly reliable as it has been generated and executed in the Darwin X environment. Now, in terms of the hypothesis, the momentum factor we were talking about earlier on, we're going to go ahead and create a dummy hypothesis. This will fail because no, th no thought has been put into it whatsoever. The idea behind this tutorial today is to, to show you how to go about quant R&D using the Darwin API, accessing the various different parts of the Darwin API, and using your domain knowledge about Darwin's in the context of strategy development. So this hypothesis, will basically assume that a Darwin's end of day return or end of week return or end of month return, the three periods that we'll be testing in this um, uh, trading strategy today, uh, the Darwin's end of period return is possibly predictive of the direction of its next period return. To keep things simple, what we'll do here is that we won't look at anything other than return and we'll only trade the top X Darwins by end of day, end of week, or end of month return. Uh, this text needs updating here. It will be uh, prior to being uploaded to GitHub, but essentially we will be looking at periodic returns, not just end of day returns. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, coworkers, and friends, and do subscribe to the Darwin X YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on Darwin X. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.